Hey. Um, I'm filming this video because I've been accused of sexually assaulting my sister. <laughs> you tried to do the FBI, didn't work! So instead, he resorts to the paycheck, and you got it! Are you happy? No! November 1973, Tom Willett molested two boys at a shelter. 50 years later, he became a famous YouTuber, amassing thousands of followers. But the moment his shady past was exposed, he lost it all, changing the course of his life forever. Here's some dirty YouTubers who got exposed as predators. Feature Man My fellow Americans, as President of the United States, it is my duty to bring you the bad news as well as the good news, and there is bad news. How would you feel if you followed this kind old guy on YouTube and then found out he was a sex offender from 50 years ago? Well, hold on to that answer, because it really describes the situation of Tom Willett, aka The Feature Man. A quick scroll through Tom's channel and you can see hundreds and hundreds of clips with all kinds of topics, from stock tips and original songs to SFX testing, cooking instructions, and fast food reviews. This channel had gathered around 380,000 subscribers with 25 million total views since it kicked off in April 2006, about a year after YouTube first launched. He's an early adopter and a prolific poster, and thanks to reposts on Reddit and Twitter, he gained something of a cult following in recent years. Before he became a YouTuber though, Tom here was a working actor and musician who made his living in piano bars and on movie sets. Raised in a small Kentucky town, Willett started shooting film when he was just 17 years old. Then he would teach himself camera tricks and techniques, and before long would travel all the way to pave his career path in Hollywood. He was featured as an extra in a few movies before relocating to Las Vegas, where he taught himself how to play the piano while working at a furniture warehouse. But he still felt as Hollywood was calling his name, so he returned turned to LA and began pursuing work as not just an extra, but to land a major role. However, this was the point where controversy set in. November 1973, while playing in this musical group that volunteered to entertain the children at Child Haven in Las Vegas, Willett met a boy whom he molested. He went with the boy to his room to show him his guitar, but that would end in the first of several acts of oral con during the same month, Willett would visit another home for boys, and met yet another innocent boy whom he molested. One way or another, Willett's actions came to light, and as such, he was arrested and charged with crimes related to the case. Consequently, he was handed three life sentences, but those sentences were eventually suspended, while Willett was instead placed on probation. And the only reason why this controversy was never made known is that Willett himself discussed his conviction in a since-deleted YouTube video. Some people's perspective about him didn't change, while for others, he was a depraved sexual molester who should have never been let out. So this brings us back to our question. How would you have reacted if you found out about this old pervert? Onision. You tried to do the FBI, didn't work! You tried to do the police, didn't work! So instead, he resorts to the paycheck, and you got it! Considered the most evil YouTuber to ever be on that platform, Onision dropped from fame as quickly as he rose to it. In 2009, Onision, real name Gregory James Jackson, became popular on YouTube after dropping a video called Banana Song I'm a Banana. That video gathered over 90 million views and helped Jackson reach over 2 million subscribers. Gregory here posted content which often included sketches, rants, and personal vlogs, keeping him relevant on the platform while making him one of the most prominent creators at the time. However, his fame began to be overshadowed by a series of controversies. Several of his former partners, including Shiloh Hoganson and Billy Don Webb, came forward with allegations of emotional and psychological abuse, manipulation, and grooming. Onision vehemently denied these allegations, but they began to taint his reputation. Moreover, his content started reflecting questionable conduct. He would often exploit personal relationships and difficult situations for views, leading many to accuse him of disregarding the privacy and feelings of those involved. Open your mouth. No, Greg, I don't want any. Open your mouth. Ow! Ow, that one really, really hurt. Now, the biggest allegation against him involved grooming girls with his husband, Kai. For those unaware of what grooming is, it's when a predator gains the trust of a victim to later start this sexual relationship. In Jackson's case, a woman known as Sarah had a relationship with Jackson's husband, formerly known as Laney Bott, back in 2014. 
Jackson had romantic conversations with Sarah, often sharing inappropriate jokes and comments. Kai eventually adopted Sarah when she was 16, and she moved in with both Kai and Greg, adding a bigger twist to their already disturbing story. November 2019, Chris Hansen, a TV journalist known for his show To Catch a Predator, began investigating Onision, leading to a further public outcry. This investigation brought more attention to the allegations against him. One of those allegations documented four other women who claimed that Greg and his husband had physically and sexually assaulted him. This documentary would go viral, leading the creator's subscription service Patreon to ban Onision's account. In response to the ban, Jackson uploaded a video where he seemingly contorted himself, stripped down to his underwear, and poured a bottle of kombucha over his head. I mean, if people didn't know before, then this made it perfectly clear. Onision wasn't who everyone thought he was. But did he face any legal action for these accusations? Well, no. February 9th, 2023. It was reported that a lawsuit was being filed against Greg and his husband for using his popular YouTube channels to recruit, solicit, and groom victims into having intercourse with them, with YouTube and its parent company Google also named as co-defendants for continuing to monetize his channels. As of right now, this lawsuit hasn't made any headway. And although YouTube has demonetized the channel, this guy just keeps on posting. Colleen Bollinger So, I just wanted to say that, um, the only thing I've ever groomed is my two Persian cats. I'm not a groomer. I'm just a loser. You've probably seen that video floating around the internet somewhere. And yeah, you might have thought it was fun to watch, but in reality, it was popular YouTuber Colleen here's response to the allegations of her being a sexual predator. In April 2020, Adam McIntyre, an underage fan and YouTuber, accused Bollinger of seeking his unpaid assistance for content suggestions for her Miranda Singh social media accounts and of sending him her lingerie when he was much younger. The following month, Colleen uploaded a video to YouTube addressing the accusations. In that video, she would state that McIntyre had requested the lingerie after seeing it showcased in one of her live streams, as it would be one of many gifts for her fans. She also admitted that it was a lapse in judgment to send underwear to him. For a moment, her fans truly believed that story, but what they didn't realize was that this was just the beginning of many other shocking allegations yet to come. For context here, Colleen's an American comedian, YouTuber, actress, singer, and writer. She's best known for her creation and portrayal of internet character Miranda Sings, posting videos of characters on YouTube performing her one-woman comedy act on tour in theaters worldwide, and creating and starring in a Netflix original series titled Haters Back Off. She attained a certain level of fame as an internet personality and celebrity, but it didn't happen without her soiling her name in a bunch of controversy. April 28th, 2020, Irish content creator Adam McIntyre, who first began running a fan account for Miranda Sings in 2013 when he was just 10 years old, posted a video to his YouTube channel called Colleen Bollinger Stop Lying, in which he accused her of putting him in uncomfortable situations when he was a minor. Now, like we said, she came out and tried to clear up that mess only for another set of accusations to pop out a few years later. June 4th, 2023, in a since-deleted video titled Why I Left the Colleen Bollinger Fandom, YouTuber Cody Rance shared screenshots of these messages between Colleen and her followers, accusing the comedian of forming inappropriate and exploitative relationships with underage fans. In one screenshot, Colleen can be asking a fan here if he was a virgin, while also asking him for their favorite position. And apart from these weird conversations, Colleen's choice in naming the group Colleenies Weenies just didn't sit right with the public. Cody Rance, however, deleted that video barely moments later, and so the information he provided couldn't be verified to take legal action against Colleen. Consequently, McIntyre, who had earlier accused her of misconduct, responded with a series of videos on his own channel, recalling a time that the then 31-year-old planned to spend the day with him in Dublin ahead of a June 8, 2018 show. He said that they only ended up meeting for five minutes, but that she grooms her fans emotionally. This prompted the ridiculous apology video she posted in the form of a song. Some fans may have thought it was funny, but many thought it was a deception to sway her viewers from the underlying issues. Now, before you start judging, her days of controversy were far from over. After her response, an ex-employee of Colleen's posted alleged screenshots in which she appeared to be sending him nude photos of YouTube and OnlyFans creator Trisha Paytas. McIntyre then asserted Colleen had sent him the same images for both of them to make fun of Paytas. 
Trisha in turn would release her own video condemning Colleen and ending their personal and professional relationship. Due to the floating scandals around her name here, Colleen was forced to cancel the remainder of her 2023 live shows. She is still active on YouTube and has no legal action taken against her for grooming anybody, but that's because there's no substantial evidence to do so. But it may seem as though the better days of her career are far behind her. Austin Jones Back in February, Jones, who is from Bloomingdale, was accused of coercing six fans to send him sexually explicit videos. June 9th, 2017, a U.S. magistrate judge signed a search warrant for Jones's residence in Bloomingdale, Illinois. Three days later, Homeland Security investigations executed that search warrant, and on the same day, Jones was arrested at the O'Hare International Airport by these Homeland Security agents on two counts of producing child pornography, once in 2016 and another in 2017. But this wasn't the side of Jones that he made known to the public. To his fans, he was the perfect-faced, good-looking guy with a voice that could sweep any lady off her feet. So this guy was born on December 12th, 1992, rising to fame as both a musician and a YouTuber. Jones began releasing his music in 2007 and started writing his own material in 2010. In 2014, he released his EP titled We'll Fall Together, which ended up at number 12 on the iTunes pop chart. He began experiencing tremendous growth from there, accumulating around 540,000 subs on his YouTube channel and over 20 million views. He built up a solid profile based around his covers of famous pop songs until his shady secrets began coming to light. In 2015, an anonymous victim of Jones began a petition on Change.org to revoke his planned partition in an upcoming tour. Now, This petition didn't accumulate the needed number of signatures, but Jones eventually withdrew from the tour and addressed the allegations in a video uploaded to his channel titled, Setting the Record Straight. This guy admitted the allegations were correct and apologized for his actions while denying that nudity was involved in any of the videos he recorded or any of the webcam conversations. Two years later, further accusations were brought down on Jones. It was discovered that he had groomed and encouraged six victims to send him explicit videos and private messages, telling him they needed to prove that they were his biggest fans. In one of those chats, he would even take out his time to teach these girls how to twerk. Hey cutie, um, so this is like the first basic twerk move. <laughs> um, so this is what you do. You stand with your legs apart, you bend your legs, and then you arch your back and you arch it. You do it faster, so it's like this. February 1st, 2019. Jones pled guilty to a single count of receipt of child pornography. He was given 10 years in federal prison and as of right now, is located at FCI Loretto, with his earliest possible release date listed as December 31st, 2027. Shane Dawson You're gonna I don't get arrested! Wanna, I know, but I didn't want to see child porn. I just wanted to see like, okay, let me just pretend, let me pretend like I'm a pedophile for a sec. Okay, by the way, just for the record, police, I have nothing to do with this. I didn't know this. Like, you can literally get arrested for saying I know, this. Let me. And that was famous YouTuber Shane Dawson's big apology for his pedophilia remarks. But his actions right after suggested that this guy might have actually been a predator. Since September 2005, Shane here had enjoyed a prolific career on YouTube ever since he had launched his channel. He started doing sketch comedy videos and music, and then in 2008 he would create his Shane Dawson TV channel, where he would continue to upload longer form sketches and short films. In November 2019, he created a third channel, Shane Glosson where he uploaded only six more personal videos. But throughout his time period, one thing was constant. Dawson changed his style of content many times. And coincidentally, the change always coincided with the controversy that he landed in. This is usually how it goes. He gets called out for something he did. He apologizes, maybe takes some time away from the channel, and then returns with something completely different. But even that couldn't help save his career when he made these obscene remarks about pedophilia. In one episode of Shane and Friends, he was talking about an underage girl who had over 100,000 followers on the gram by calling her a sexy kid. So let's say that was light. He would also express his thoughts by saying being a pedophile shouldn't be viewed as a crime, but rather a weird fetish. 
He was immediately called out by his fans for that comment, which the video has now been taken down, and even though he would apologize for those comments, a bigger controversy was unraveled. June 27, 2020 an old video of Shane pretending to pleasure himself to a poster of teenage Willow Smith was posted on Twitter. The outrage was insane, causing him to lose millions of followers across all his channels, going from almost 24 million subs to around 19 million. And the Smiths came after him, with Jada Pinkett calling him out on his tweets that have now been deleted. At the end of the day, this guy had his fair share of fame and downfall, but could he really be termed a predator, or did he just take his jokes too far? Jikishi. And I'm still just in shock at the fact that you guys have showed me so much love and support. It's from one raid. One raid changed my life, and I, I appreciate you guys so much. The story of Minecraft's dirtiest predator, Jikishi, is similar to those we've already talked about, but in this case, Jikishi's fall was a shock to the entire gaming community. Demetrius, who goes by the alias Jikishi, is a former Twitch streamer and YouTube content creator. As you guessed, he gained his popularity through Minecraft entertaining his fans. His last known stream on Twitch was on October 25th, 2021, where he had amassed over 202,000 views in total. He had a following of about 56,900 fans on that platform where he streamed for over seven years. He'd put in the work and was set to become the next big Minecrafter streamer and YouTuber, but things didn't go as planned as his past came to haunt his promising future. On October 24th, 2021, Jikishi was invited to join Dream's private SMP server, which is what every Twitch streamer dreams of. Broadcasting on this server comes with a massive increase in a following count and can get the streamer big sponsor deals. This guy grabbed 32,000 new followers just from saying that he had joined the Dream SMP server. However, all that would come crashing down just 48 hours after it started. The downfall began on October 26, 2021, when a Twitter user named Ren accused Jikishi of grooming. Keep in mind that this user was an underage female who claimed to have been communicating with the streamer for around two years. According to her story, Jikishi made numerous inappropriate approaches towards her, despite her not being interested. And then shortly after that tweet was posted, Dream announced that Jikishi had been removed from that server, as he was disgusted and incredibly disappointed by his actions. Today, Jikishi is the only streamer to receive a permanent ban by Dream SMP. But even that wouldn't stop the flood of accusations that came in the following days. Around 40 miners came forward with nearly similar experiences. And not long after these major events, Jikishi's Twitch account got terminated for breaking terms of service, and he deleted all of his YouTube videos. This person would just disappear from the internet, deleting all of his social media, apart from Twitter or X or whatever, which has been inactive for a long time. And if you're wondering what happened to this guy, well, no one knows. The last known person to have contacted him was his roommate, who revealed in a post on Twitlonger that he had kicked Jakishi out of their apartment and had no idea where he went from there. What a way to kill your career, man. Thaddeus McMichael I don't know, I'm not that interested in real people like that, you know? Because real people aren't that sexy to me when it comes to that kind of shit. So, Mr. McMichael here, aka Mad Thad 0890, wasn't a big time YouTuber. However, he was a self incriminating sociopath that exposed his perverse actions to the feds through his YouTube and Facebook channels. You see, McMichael lived in Detroit, Michigan, describing himself as a loner in his YouTube videos. He's obsessed over Mary Sue's character from the anime School Days. He would Photoshop that character's image on almost all his shirts, posters, and even pillowcases. To him, she wasn't just a flimsy, generic anime character created by a middle-aged Japanese man. She was a woman with her own personality and who also happened to put up with his excess. He claimed she blocked him from getting an actual date, scowled at computer screens when someone said something negative about school days, himself or her, and some other insanely random things that McMichael could try to think up. In one of his videos, he claimed to be sharing a cake with his waifu, which is a female fictional character. But by sharing, this dude was actually just eating two separate cakes in front of anime pictures. And when he wasn't being delusional, McMichael was admitting what other illegal fetishes he liked to get off to. In this one video, he added that he would have molested his own brother had he not been bisexual. Now, that's disturbing, man. And to think that McMichael posted and openly talked about these things just shows how shallow-minded he was. However, it didn't take long before the FBI came for him. 
in response to multiple anonymous complaints about his posts. In 2013, the FBI barged into his house and seized every shred of tech that he owned. When questioned, he replied that Facebook posts about his CP collection were only a joke. However, the FBI wasn't stupid as they found 300 to 350 CP pictures and videos on his hard drive in a folder labeled, Don't Click. This guy took a plea bargain that required him to spend 5 to 20 years in prison and would also require him to delete all his online accounts and register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. Dr. Nicholas Bate Hey, hey, okay, is it recording? Yeah, it's recording. Hey, this is Nick Bate, and um, I'm going to give you a video tour of my room. Yeah, that was Nick Bate, a seemingly harmless YouTuber doing his thing to grow his channel. However, behind that innocent face was a monster who raped his own sister to satisfy his obnoxious fetishes. September 1st, 1991 marked the date of this demon being born in the state of Pennsylvania. He was living with his two parents at the time, however, his aunt Joyce claimed that his father was abusive and an alcoholic, which resulted in both parents getting a divorce when he was just 10 years old. This would lead his mother to remarry, bringing in his half-sister, Amber, into the picture. Nick originally attended Penn Manor School District, where he was placed and emotional support while in fourth grade. Now here's the thing, some teachers described him as this smart, funny kid, while others said that he was antisocial and straight up weird. Turns out things got so bad he would be homeschooled for the rest of his high school days. It was at this point that he created his first YouTube channel, at Dr. Nicholas Bay. November 11th, 2009. So he started his channel with short vlogs like house tours of his trailer, vlogs with his family, and many others. Based on the year and camera quality, you can see that it was a kid just starting out. But that aside, there was something more troubling about these videos. Nick claimed to be autistic countless times, but a psychiatric evaluation showcased that he was able to reach cognitive milestones and thereby debunking those claims. He took medication for anxiety and depression while also admitting that he liked cross-dressing as a woman and wearing panties. Might be a little weird to admit that in a vlog, not today anymore, but no one really bothered about it back then as well, until he committed one of his gravest acts against humanity. Between 2008 and 2009, Nick claimed in many chats that he would lick his sisters behind before she wipes from going to the bathroom. I mean, that's, that's disgusting. But it ain't even the worst of thoughts floating around this depraved mind. He previously stated that he had labeled himself as a pedophile, saying that it shouldn't be stigmatized and also legalized in the US, and also stated that he would never have non-consensual intercourse with minors. I mean, it sounds crazy, but something even crazier is that Nick had a girlfriend. Well, at least that's what he thought. He had an online girlfriend for a brief period named Anna, whom he originally met on a roleplay forum. Nick was ridiculed by his fans for being extremely obsessed with Anna. In some of their chats, Nick would talk about his weird fetishes and admit to having molested his half-sister, much to Anna's disgust. On social media, he would write fan fictions and draw pictures about Anna, sometimes relating to coophilia. He'd also claim that he begged her to marry him and had pleasured himself from her texts. Anna soon would break up with this guy, and her friend Miles Edgeworth said in a chat that Anna hated him and never wanted to talk to him again. At this point, he opened up a second YouTube channel, at Constant Butts, where he showcased a folder in which he keeps all of the letters Anna sent him, and a wall depicting drawings and photos of her. April 30th, 2015, Nick was arrested on incest charges, and once he posted bail, he would take down most of the videos from his channels and took to Twitter to deny allegations. However, to prove him guilty, prosecutors had to explain what grooming was in a courtroom. This coupled with the other incriminating chat logs left the judge with no other option than to sentence this guy to 16 of 40 years in prison. He's attempted to appeal that sentence twice, but both were denied. Romeo Lacoste Ladies and gentlemen, we have Romeo on the line. Uh, Romeo, you have some serious allegations against you. Um, are you guilty of these things? Um, I want to say that some are real and some are fabricated. That was famous YouTube tattoo artist Romeo Lacoste in a virtual interview with popular YouTuber and drama alert host Daniel Keemstar Keem, the man he eventually sued for $3.5 million. But we'll get to that story in a bit. First, you need to know about the sexual allegations that Lacoste got entangled in. Texts from 2016 purportedly showed Lacoste asking girls, who mentioned that they were underage, inappropriate requests like if they'd imbibe his semen with a shot of alcohol, or how they could try to be slutty for him. 
Soon, other women came forward and started talking. Lacoste, 30 years old at the time, grew his fan base between 2015 and 16 by tattooing celebrities like Justin Bieber, Kendrick Lamar, and Ariana Grande. He also had his own channel at Romeo Lacoste with over 890,000 subscribers. This guy was big in the YouTube space, but one huge mistake that crushed his entire online persona was that dumb thing he did at the earlier part of his career. March 15th, 2019, a Twitter account with the handle at Yellowchair started posting videos and screenshots of alleged interactions Lacoste had with women who were still teenagers while he was in his mid-twenties. One of the messages reads, Tell me how you try to be slutty. With another saying, The prop gets you a little drunk first. You're not down to do it sooner, or you want to wait till you're 18? Yeah, these allegations were pretty bad. However, they weren't the worst. A second Twitter user with the handle at Ultra Honey posted tweets that claimed that she had dated Romeo for three years when she was obviously not above the age of consent. She dropped a bunch of tweets detailing their toxic relationship to the fullest. He was extremely manipulative, emotionally draining, she wrote. He took advantage of our age difference, used guilt to coerce me into doing things I didn't want to do. These allegations caused a massive uproar on Twitter and YouTuber Keemstar, who took it upon himself to run the gossip mills a little longer. He interviewed at Ultra Honey on his YouTube drama alert show where she confirmed her side of the allegations against Lacoste. She also expressed how she was disgusted, knowing he was still doing such while in his 30s. After the video was released, Honey surprised everyone by deleting most of her tweets and claiming she didn't want to be involved in the whole drama anymore. While users were still trying to wrap their heads around why she took that stance, Lacoste actually contacted Keem and opted to do an interview himself. The two would speak for about half an hour, and in summary, Lacoste didn't entirely deny or admit the allegations. He reiterated that it was early on in his career when girls were throwing themselves at him, and after concluded the interview by apologizing to his friends and family who had been hurt by these allegations coming to light, and also to any of the girls who felt manipulated by his actions. So following that interview, Lacoste and his girlfriend, Gigi Angelica Marie, set their Twitter and Instagram accounts to private, but that wouldn't help the situation. Lacoste sued Keem for $3.5 million on grounds of him posting about the allegations the moment they surfaced. Although Keem seemed positive he would win the case, no one knows how the case played out and what happened to Lacoste next. His last video on YouTube was posted one year from the time of making this video. We're not sure if he's completely out of the limelight, but his YouTube definitely suffered after these allegations. Plasma Mastered On If you ever need to talk, you can always count on me. Donzel Edward Owens Jr., better known online as Plasma Mastered On, was this seemingly sweet old man posting YouTube videos on a range of topics. But once the lights went off and the cameras were cut, Edward Owens morphed into this ruthless sexual predator. Born September 10, 1957, Owens grew up living with his four siblings in Ohio. Who would have thought? We don't know much about his personal life, only really that he had a formal education and graduated with an associate degree from Penn, Ohio College in 1967. October 22, 2006, 59 year old Donzel created his first channel under the name Plasma Dude 47. He created his second channel under the name Plasma Don 1947 a year later, but both channels would be deleted by hackers. He would then create a third at Plasma Master Don, amassing over 400,000 subscribers. He was known as a cover artist, dropping covers for songs like I'll Always Love You by Whitney Houston. But after a few years of surfing the waves of success, his skeletons poured out of the closet. August 19th, 2019, Columbiana County Sheriff's Office revealed that 73-year-old Donzel Edward Owens Jr. was convicted of sexual in position for assaulting this boy five months prior. Four days after those allegations were posted up on Reddit, he came out and said that his health was hindering his singing abilities and that he might have to step away from YouTube. But you know what? This predator continued posting videos for over a month until his consistent uploads abruptly stopped. On December 21st, 2020, one of Ohio's chapels announced that Donzel Edward Owens Jr. had passed away following his struggle with an illness. Perversely enough though, one of Plasma Master Don's final videos was a birthday wish to a boy. A boy many suspect that he also had violated in the past.